Hello and welcome to Kickback Garage. Today I want to show you the easiest and cheapest way to bleed hydraulic disc brakes. So if that's something you're going to do in the near future, grab yourself a brew and I'll see you after the intro. Messing around with these cameras, battery is going flat. All the sprung log of Villa come under talk. In your novice mark out to other forty frog for what to do or draw. Can we phone can a sudden come? Do has some two comments of the other brother last summer? Welcome back. So I was out riding the old Lambretta the other day and I noticed that the uh brake handle, the brake lever, started to uh, feel a little bit spongy and the brakes brakes weren't quite as uh, on par as they normally are. And thinking about it, I don't think I've changed uh, the brake fluid in that thing oh, for maybe about three years. I think normally the normal recommendation is about change the brake fluid every year, every other year, something like that. But yeah, anyway, it's been working fine from, uh, until then. Before you start the process, you really need to know which type of brake fluid you've got in your system. And normally, it will be stamped on the top of the master cylinder. On the, this custom job I've got here, it says nothing, but I know it's dot four. Now, dot three and dot four, they're quite normal. They're like the most normal types. And you have the fancy smancy dot five. Uh, the difference between dot four and dot five is uh, dot five is like silicone based so if you use that in a dot four system it can destroy the rubbers and it can make a real mess of the of the cylinders and pistons and stuff so you really shouldn't use it dot three and dot four they're hydroscopic uh, what that basically means is that they pull moisture from the air and it kills your brake fluid so it's very very important that you find out which Brake, type of brake fluid you use for your system and then we need some really really basic tools you just need a spanner that's the same size as your nipple on the uh, caliper and you need a bit of hose this is some flexi rubber hose that I just bought from the local hardware store it's uh, really bendy so it, it, I just fit it straight onto the bleed nipple but I'll show you how to do that afterwards when you show which uh, brake fluid you need, I need dot four. Please don't be tempted to go into your cupboard and grab your half empty uh, dot four from two years ago because the problem with this is it really does have a shelf life. Once it's been opened, it'll uh, attract the uh, water that's uh, in the air and uh, it just goes bad. And if you change this with the stuff they've already got in there, you probably end up with the same effect, so you have to buy brand new dot four. So I normally go for the cheaper stuff, and I buy in as small a bottle as I can because um, if I'm if I'm at a push, maybe I'll do one or two scooters, and then it's going to sit for a couple of years. Like I said, that one I haven't done for at least three years, so the brakes have got a bit spongy. So buy yourself a new bottle of, uh, of brake fluid, especially if it's dot three and dot four, because they're the hygro hy hygroscopic ones. The hygroscopic ones. It's a big word, isn't it? Hi. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hydraulic fluid is really nasty stuff. So try and. Protect your paintwork as much as you can. Here I've just used an old t-shirt. And then we can open uh, the master cylinder. And I've just dropped my Allen key. There we go, found it again. So on my master cylinder, on this particular one, the MMW or LTH, I have... Ah, they sit really, really good sometimes. I have uh, Allen key, which is pretty handy. Um, one to watch here is, let me get it up. One to watch here is if you've got Scoot RS or the Spark or something like that, the Asian produced Lambretta uh, set up from, uh, from Vietnam, then they use typically they uh, they use the Nissin master cylinder and if you look at the screws on those 
they have a little indentation. They look like normal Phillips screws, but they have a little indentation on the side there. It looks like they've had a punch. Now, uh, what that stands for is Japanese standard. So really, if you've got those and you don't want to bugger them up because they do sit pretty hard uh, when they've been stood for a while, please go out and buy a Japanese standard uh, screwdriver it'll save you a lot of hassle i've <laughs> i think i rounded off with two or three screws uh, about 15 years ago before i i didn't even know that uh, there was such a thing as japanese standard but uh yeah so they do the job and if you can then uh when you're going to put them back together again buy yourself uh, an allen key type uh screw they're a lot easier to get up. Ideally, you should put... I have got some anti-seize on here. You can't see it that well. But I've put some more copper slip or something like that when I put it back together again. Now, be a little bit careful. You don't want to be squulping it. Oi, oi, oi. It's sitting really hard. I might have to give it a bit of a wiggle. Oh, there we go. And try not to tear the little rubber manifold that sits on the end and uh, put that somewhere safe right I'm brightening up proceedings here with a little LED cycling light <laughs> placed on a dead battery so hopefully you can see what I'm doing down here now obviously this is the caliper and another one to watch with the uh, scooter brakes at least is Sometimes they come with the bleed nipple on the bottom of the caliper. Now, the bad news for you guys is that really you should take off the caliper and turn it around. Because if the bleed lip nipple isn't at the highest point of the caliper, then it's going to be a lot, lot harder to get the air out of the, out of the system. So, if you have to do that, then I'm sorry for you. And if you have to take off the caliper, the best way to bleed your brakes is by placing a spanner or something where the disc would normally be so this is a little nipple on the top here I'm not sure you can see it because of my but you can see there there's a little rubber cap on the top there and take that off it's dirty dirty really dirty I'm gonna give that a bit of a clean I don't really want contaminants going anywhere it's a bit of a mess So that's pretty clean. That's all right. That'll do. There you go. Shiny happy. Right. What I do is I use uh, the round end of a spanner. That fits slots on the top there nicely. And then I place the hose over the nipple. And obviously... You need some sort of receptacle to uh, catch the catch the oil. I'll pick you up. We'll have a look. And you can see the oil is uh, it's quite a dark brown colour. So that's uh, that's definitely the way out. Normally it's a pretty see-through yellowish uh, clear colour. So that's pretty dirty. So I, I cracked open the nipple, I gave a squeeze of the brake handle. Now, while I hold the brake handle, I close it again. And now I can let go of the brake handle. And what I have to do is check the reservoir. And when it's starting to empty, I can add fresh new uh, brake fluid. So when you when you've fit your spanner, uh, to your bleed nipple and your bit of tubing this is the procedure and it's very important to go this way or you could have lots of trouble uh, with uh, getting rid of the air so what you do is crack it open quarter of a turn not even that I think probably that's probably about an eighth and then you compress the lever brake lever and I'm pressing out the old brake fluid, then I close it again. If you want to make your life really easy, it's very important that you don't let the reservoir go empty. 
So you yeah, empty as much as you can without getting down to the hole in the bottom there and then you can fill up with fresh fluid and that will purge the old fluid out. Okay, so let's, uh, let's uh, keep going. So as I say, crack it open. That's definitely an eighth of the turn. Compress. I'm not sure if you can see the fluid, but it's definitely going out there. Close it, open the brake lever, open the nipple, compress the lever, close the nipple, open the lever, open the nipple, compress the lever slowly, close the nipple, open the lever. So we're just going to do that until I need to feel some more fluid in the top. Now don't get carried away, remember you have to keep that brake fluid topped up. So what happened now was that I noticed that the uh, handle started getting a little bit harder and I could see that the, the uh, dot fluid in, uh, in the hose here was getting clearer and wasn't any more air bubbles. So now it's time to button it up again. Be really careful when you take off the hose so that you don't get it on definitely do not get it on your brake pads once you've secured the bleed nipple on the, on the caliper then you can top up the the fluid in your uh, master cylinder make sure that it's at the, over the minimums mark and replace replace the lid mm -hmm. And like I said, when you replace the bolts, it's good practice to uh, use a bit of copper slip. Copper paste. Copper slip? Copper paste. You know what I'm talking about. When you've buttoned it all up, get it right with some brake cleaner and uh, give it a good wash because that uh, dot 4 is really corrosive. So if you can see anything, or if, even if you can't see anything that you've, uh, that you've spilled, it's just to neutralize it. That looks good. Right, let's have a feel. Oh. Now that's much better. Now another top tip here is if you want to make sure you've got 100% uh, of uh, the air out of the system then you can tighten your lever and use a zip tie. But because I'm a cheapskate I'm going to be using tape. So what I do is Tighten the lever. And I tape it up like that. And if you let that stand overnight, if there's any remaining air in the system, it'll find its way up into the master cylinder. Job done. That's basically the easiest way you can bleed your brakes. Now, if you buy a brand new brake system, 
uh, and you're just going to fill the, fill the oil. You do it in exactly the same way. The only difficulty I've had is uh, about 10 years ago I had a double disc and the problem with that was uh, you obviously do one caliper and then close that off and then do the same with the other caliper but I had problems with the fact that I think the bubble was accumulating on the U part of the uh, uh, cylinder hose at the bottom there so then I had to actually <laughs> go to a, a motorbike garage and, and uh, they used the vacuum uh, system there but, but normally on all the other bikes it's, it's really really simple to do it that way if you think these tips were helpful then uh, subscribe, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. You'll do your bike no favour whatsoever. If you change this with the stuff that's in there, it's probably just as much moisture in it. Why do I do that? Isn't that annoying? Fucking brilliant, man.